A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the children of Israel marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, and the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into the midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army that had followed the children of Israel into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the children of Israel had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power of the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. At the breath of your anger, the waters piled up. The flowing waters stood like a mound. The flood waters congealed in the midst of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue and overtake them. I will divide the spoils and have my fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall despoil them. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself. When your wind blew, the sea covered them, like lead they sank in the mighty waters. When you stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. He has covered himself in glory. And you brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands established. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, asking to speak with you. But he said in reply to the one who told him, who is my mother, who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. 
For whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we've been making our way through Exodus, children of Israel making their way out of Egypt and yesterday and today as they approach the Red Sea, uh, they are presented with one option. I guess there was kind of two options, but really just one option. The only option was trust God. And as you look at yesterday and today's readings where they're coming out and they're heading to the Red Sea and they get to this place where there is absolutely no good out outcome. There's Egypt on one side coming down to kill them. There is an impassable sea. And, and you see in this God doing something very intentional, needing to take Israel to a place of complete trust and surrender. No outlet. If they had one, they would have taken it. And in part, they are coming to know who God is, really. They, they, they have known Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but, and the, their God, but they don't really know who God is. They've yet to really trust in God. They've walked in obedience to somewhat to what Moses has given them and the Passover, and now they're fleeing. But they get brought to this place where they have stepped out in faith to some extent, and now there is no other option than to rely on God. As they, yesterday's reading, they complained to Moses, we should have just been in Egypt, we could have died there. But today, as God does this intervention for them, because there is no other outlet, there is no other hope than God to break in and do something that only God can do. And look at the result of this. The result is, after they saw all this, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. And boy, this sets up a, a difficult spiritual principle for us. That deep faith and, and, and really living for God is often brought about in the midst of circumstances that invite us to do nothing other than trust in God, to where there is no other outcome than could be had than if we trusted in God. And it's something that we often want to push back against. I don't want to be in vulnerable situations. I'm much more happy just providing for myself. Um, but we see in the gospel, Jesus says, listen, my, my, my family aren't, aren't my blood relatives. It's those who do the will of the Father. Those are the ones who are his mother, brothers, and sisters. And those of us who do the will of the Father will find ourselves on the threshold of faith where we have to take that step to be vulnerable and give God a chance to be faithful with his promise. Give him a chance to provide. As we were reviewing this with our family, one of my children said, yes, I, I just heard a story on the radio the other day of a man who had started an orphanage and he had some 300 children and he knew God had called them to start this orphanage and all these children were present and they'd been going for quite some time but the time came where they ran out of food they didn't know what to do. So the man called all the children to the table and said, sit down, let us thank God for the food that is to be before us. And they said, but there's no food. They sat down and they prayed and they waited. The, they had no other option. Suddenly a knock came on the door. The bread maker was coming by and his car had just broken down. And he said, I've got all this bread I can't get to where I'm going. I thought I would give it to you all. And then, sure enough, the milkman came by, and he said, actually, no, it was the milkman that broke down. His car broke down. I've got all this milk. 
let me give it to you so it doesn't go bad. But the bread maker had got up in the middle of the night and said, God had told me to get up and make extra bread and bring it to you this morning. And their need was met. Uh, but it took uh, a profound step of faith and vulnerability to call the boys together and say, let's thank God for the food that will be here. And um, the Lord is inviting us to give him opportunities to step out in faith. I know he's inviting me. I know he's inviting you. And let's give him that opportunity today. Amen.